It seems like barely a week goes by right now without another plug-in hybrid model being announced for the UK market. And this time it's the Citroen C5 Aircross Hybrid, an electrified version of a large family SUV that's been on sale in petrol and diesel form since the end of 2018. Like all plug-in hybrids, one of its main purposes is to ensure rock-bottom running costs for company car users by keeping CO2 emissions to a minimum. But we're keen to find out if by adding some of that legendary French flair to the mix can make this car more than just a sensible accounting exercise. Let's take a closer look. Not much has changed on the outside compared to the C5 Hybrid's petrol and diesel counterparts. But like those cars, it boasts some pretty bold exterior styling with distinctive slim running lights along the top of the bonnet, big headlights, a prominent Citroen logo and chunky plastic cladding running down the sides for that rugged off-road inspired look. It looks understated in the typically dark colours people tend to order their cars in these days, but we think the bright red of our test car works well. Disagree? Let us know in the comments. On closer inspection, there are a few details to set the hybrid apart from the rest of the range, such as these neat little hybrid logos on the boot lid and front wings, and of course, a second flap at the back for the charging port. Under the metal, it shares a lot with the upmarket DS7 Crossback e tents the handsome Peugeot 3008 hybrid, and the rather plain looking Vauxhall Grandland X hybrid. So we've dealt with looks, but now it's time to open up the spreadsheet for a moment and see how those all important running costs stack up. Company car tax for plug-in hybrids like this are calculated using a mixture of electric range and CO2 emissions. And the C5 hybrids numbers of 34 miles and 32 grams per kilometer are more than enough to get it into the very low 11% band from April, 2021 onwards. The savings aren't as clear cut if you're buying privately rather than running one as a company car as you have to factor in a higher list price than the petrol version. But you should still see a better fuel economy from the hybrid so long as you keep the batteries topped up as much as you can and you're mostly doing short local journeys on electric power alone. The official fuel economy figures for the C5 hybrid are between 157 and 222 miles per gallon. But this really is a best case scenario in test conditions based on starting every journey on a full battery. In everyday driving, we've seen about 42.6 miles per gallon, which we think is pretty good for a car like this. Maximizing your economy with this car means charging as often as you can. So how long does it take? Well, you can charge just using a regular three pin plug and that might be sufficient for many people as it will top up the battery fully in about six hours overnight. There is an extra charge for the cable needed to do this, however. You can also get a home wall box installed, enabling the car to charge at its maximum rate of 6.6 .6 kilowatts, which you will get a full battery in less than two hours. Unlike some manufacturers, Citroen doesn't charge extra for the onboard technology and cables needed to do this. So we've worked out how much the C5 Hybrid costs to run and how to charge it up, but what's it like to drive? Many people will associate large Citroens like this with smooth, quiet and comfortable cruising ability rather than razor sharp handling on twisty roads. Citroen wears its advanced comfort philosophy on its sleeve the idea being that a comfortable ride and a squidgy seat makes for a relaxing driving experience. And the Aircross does that to a certain extent. So at speed, it will float and glide over the bumps. But then the next moment, especially at lower speeds, it will crash over potholes and broken tarmac. So it's all very inconsistent. And the steering doesn't help either. It's very light at low speeds, but it doesn't get any weightier as your speed increases, nor does it give you much feedback. It's not all bad though. The Aircross is extremely quiet, even at motorway speeds. And when you're driving through town, the engine and electric motor will cut in and out almost imperceptibly. 
you're vaguely aware of the automatic gearbox shuffling through its eight speeds. It's all very smooth, although using the steering wheel mounted paddles is largely a waste of time, as is selecting the car's sport mode, because the tweaks these make are barely noticeable. Straight line performance is good though, and it feels faster than its 8.7 second zero to 62 time suggests. Citroen offers the C5 hybrid in two trim levels called Shine and Shine Plus. These replaced Flare and Flare Plus trim levels in December 2020 and offer the same level of equipment. Our car is a Flare model, but you can take it as being representative of a Shine in all but name. Prices for the Shine start at £34,360, and for that you get sat-nav, blind spot monitoring, lane keeping assistance, automatic emergency braking, front and rear parking sensors, and a rear view camera as standard, as well as 18 inch alloy wheels and dual zone climate control. Shine Plus comes in at closer to £36,000 and adds a half leather interior, a power adjustable driver's seat, an automatic tailgate, active cruise control, a panoramic sunroof and optional parking assistance. Inside the C5 Hybrid looks good whichever trim you get and there's a rounded rectangular design theme that repeats throughout the cabin. The high centre console makes you feel nicely cocooned in the driver's seat, but some of the materials are a bit cheap and scratchy feeling on closer inspection, which is disappointing at this price point. Storage is good though. There's two big cup holders and a large box next to you here and a large tray just in front of the gear selector. It's a bit frustrating that it's all the way over here as it's a bit more of a reach than I'd like. And how about the seats? Well, this chunky block design looks good and they're definitely nicely cushioned. They could do with a bit of extra support at the sides as you sometimes feel like you're sliding when you're going around corners, but they're definitely cozy on cold mornings like today. In terms of onboard technology, the C5 Hybrid is bang up to date. There's a digital screen rather than physical dials in front of the driver and this nice big 12 inch display comes as standard on all models. The interface, however, isn't the best we've used. It's always annoying trying to adjust the air conditioning on a touch screen, but there is at least Apple CarPlay and Android Auto connectivity, so you can easily use your preferred phone apps for music and navigation. The hybrid specific driving modes can be accessible by this button, but again, it's a bit of a reach away. Practicality can be a concern if you're looking at plug-in hybrids, as often they sacrifice some boot space in order to accommodate their batteries. And while the C5 Hybrid doesn't have any awkward boxy intrusions in the boot area, the total luggage volume is slightly less than for other C5s. All three of the back seats slide forwards and backwards individually, so you have up to 600 litres to play with when they're in place. Drop them down and you're looking at 1,510 litres in total. There's underfloor storage for the cables too. As we've just mentioned, the C5 gets three proper individually adjustable rear seats, rather than a little bump in the middle that you get on many other cars. Also, there's no transmission tunnel down here, so even the person sitting in the middle doesn't suffer from squashed feet. And that gets a big thumbs up from us. Overall, the C5 Hybrid is an interesting alternative to its Vauxhall and Peugeot cousins and its other rivals like the Ford Cougar, the Kia Nero, the Mini Countryman and the Mitsubishi Outlander plug-in hybrids. While the Citroen is certainly a more stylish car than the Vauxhall, Ford and Mitsubishi, the Kia is quite a bit cheaper and the Peugeot and Mini are better to drive. The C5 also isn't as comfortable as we'd like it to be all of the time, but it does deliver where it counts in terms of practicality and running costs. So it's definitely worth a look. Head to drivingelectric.com for all the latest electric car advice, news and reviews. And check us out on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. Make sure you subscribe to the Driving Electric YouTube channel and hit the bell icon so you're notified when a new video goes live.